and welcome to Top of the World. If it's your first time, I'm Simon, and this is a small trimming project we're going to do. Uh, how to trim out a gothic arch. There are a number of ways to do it. All you've got to bear in mind is uh, tooling for machinery you may have, hand tools, skill level, and cost. In this particular instance, cost is relevant but irrelevant. So it was relevant if I was going to trip out in hardwood, because I don't have hardwood here, but I do have lots of softwood. And since I machine it all myself and fell it, it's not so bad for me to be able to do it this way. I don't have any uh, suitable laminating glue, so I've laminated these together with polyurethane glue. I've also not put dowels or biscuits in there in inside so they are just laminated that's a matching pair and there's another matching pair down there and these are have got to be cut and trimmed to the shape of the gothic arch at the moment there quite glued to the bench there he is that what are you doing sitting on his chair. I've left him, uh, normally I do his Mohican a lot longer, but if I leave it too long, Sarah comes along with the scissors and cuts it off. So I thought I'd cut it a bit short this year, see if I can get it to stay a little longer. Fully trimmed. Hello. What's your name then? So I've taken the clamps off and laid them together on the table so you kind of get the kind of picture, except they're way oversized, way oversized. Um, and now it's a case of taking them up and scribing them against the actual arch before I can start taking off the surplus timber. So what I've done is I've taken these to the arch and I've, subscri I've scribed the outside line. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take them to the bandsaw and cut off the outside. So I've now marked it in a rebate. You can kind of see how they're starting to form. In a way. So now we're gonna cut the surplus off the inside and smooth the edges and get ready to rebate them. 
so they fit with the inner liner. So if it didn't make a lot of sense before, it's starting to come now. What I've now done is I finished the inside of the four sections of the arch. And I can use the inside to run the outside line in the way that I want it. And the width that I want it. So what I've done is I've set that at 70 millimetres. So that I'm then... able to mark the outer line around the curve, giving me the exact same width all the way. So I've got my outer line here, which is parallel with my inside edge. And then this line here, this is the rebate line. And whilst that doesn't mean anything at the moment, it will do, because we're gonna take all of this out. Because what we're looking at at the moment is the underside, the wall side. Once we take this rebate out here, we'll take this down half the width of the timber, which is 15 mil to leave a 15 mil trim on the outside and it coming round the corner to meet the inside face. So they're in their final size now, not to be completely unexpected. One broke, now it didn't break on the glue lines. It broke because I've got vertical grain and it's broken on the grain. In fact, that's got a distinct weakness, an existing crack. So not a problem. We're gonna be able to glue these back together so that you'd never know they come apart. Okay, let me show you what I've done here. So this was the one that was broken in three places. I've inserted a small tack in there to stop it from sliding as I've glued it and clamped it. And then I've done the same there, a small tack which I can withdraw, stops it from sliding. And then I've gone round to the others and I've pushed glue into the cracks. This one had not split all the way through because uh, the next stage is to rebate these out and um, that's when we're going to break. That's when we're going to have splitting when we start to rebate. It's the next morning I've had to allow stuff to dry the blue. So you can see here the rebate I was talking about to make this trim all one. Thank you.
and I've had to relieve and I'm right up to the line. I'm going to do up to the line with the router because what I'm using to get that out isn't going to give me the exact finish to the line that I want. So this is a hobby type spindle molder. It's not even a big spindle molder. A big spindle molder would be much bigger and much stronger, but it, it does what it needs to do. So this practice of spindle molding here, uh, all the men that I ever worked or ever knew in this industry that had digits missing, all lost them on spindle molders. One of the most dangerous pieces of machinery in a small shop, a medium shop, the easiest way to lose a digit, the fastest way to lose a digit, a finger, is on one of these machines. Now that is increased 100 times when you are open spindle moulding, a practice that has long since been banned in most Western countries. But it normally has a guard and a fence and maybe even a power roller and all kinds of things to reduce it as much as possible. When you're open spindle moulding like this, every piece of safety equipment that is there to prevent accidents, prevent things flying off and prevent fingers, bodies, heads going into this has been removed. Have I seen somebody lose a digit first hand? Oh yeah, but he didn't lose one digit. He lost a digit and when he was explaining to the foreman what happened, he was in shock and he put his second finger on his second hand into the spindle moulder to show the foreman how he lost his first one. I'm kind of stuck again so in order to finish these in the way that I need to finish these what I really need is a palm router because all my routers are full size grown up men's routers you're just gonna it's not gonna it's gonna be bad I don't have a palm router so I've looked at everything I've got and I can't I haven't got a hand tool to do this and to finish these by hand, or could finish these by hand, and by using the plane or various other things, it's not quite where I want to be. Anyway, so I've got an idea. This is the pillar drill that we restored last year. I think I did a video of it. Anyway, can I turn this into an overhead router? Because I've got router tables, but you can't see what you're doing. Anyway. I'm going to see if I can turn this pillar drill, it's a baby one, it's not my big one, into an overhead router. Well, I have turned the speed up into its highest setting. Uh, I'm going to try.
This is the only edge in planar I've got. Is it a Stanley? No, it ain't. And it's one I've inherited with the building. It's called Paramo, made in England. Well, it's done the job, but I've used better. Right, so that's all the straights done with the plane. Yesterday I made up this overhead router. I haven't showed you that. So because I'm on the end grain, I'm not going to be able to pan plane the end grain. Or not so easily. So this is what I done with the drill press. Bit of mica covered ply, screwed to the table under there. Horrible route a bit in the top. And uh, this is set to the depth of my rebate. And this is gonna help me clean up the corner. Now I've already done one and taken it up there and fitted it in. I've got three more to go. Two go with the grain, one goes against the grain. Now this doesn't turn very fast. It doesn't turn as fast as a router, quite clearly. Um, if I've got that set right, that's turning at uh, 2,600 RPM. No, 50 Hertz. Oh, I ain't got a clue. Ain't fast enough, is what I'm saying. So you have to be a bit thoughtful and a bit careful when using that. Anyway, that's all the hand planing done. So I've planed all the rebates now. Now I've got to plane the curves. Um, one's up and test fitted to make sure I know what I'm doing. And uh, I'll be able to start this up in a while. Now it's time to dry fit and see what we've got. So, uh, the small pieces of timber cut down the bottom there are the cut in height to where I want the trim to join into the skirting. Okay, so the, 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 the rebate will become more obvious when I show you it going around the corner. Now you want the other one to that.
So that set of trims is the reverse side. As you can see, rebated out. And this set of trims is the face side. Now I'm putting a keystone in at the top there. So um, I need to make a cut and then I need to make something uh, appropriate for the top um, in place of what would have been the keystone. So that's the two sets and they're fully fitted. I've got to run mouldings on them around the edges. Um, I'm probably going to run something in on the face and then like I say I've got to make a top which would be uh, um, where the keystone would be it's got to have a top on the outside and then the panelling's got to be trimmed but this video is already getting a bit long so that's all the hard work done what's in those so far uh, well, I'm over 60 hours. I'm probably nearer 70 hours in doing those um, from when we saw them blocked up on the table, which was for you half an hour ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. Between 60 and 70 hours so far at this point. So by the time I've done that wall and trimmed it in, moulded the skirt in, cut it all in, I'm going to be 110, 120 hours on just trimming out that wall and the Gothic arch. That could dramatically be reduced, of course. Different machinery. Um, there was a time where I had CNC's which would have run these in minutes. Uh, probably would have taken me minutes to write the programme to run them. But anyway, to do it by hand, with what I've got available to me and without spending any money, yeah, I'm, I'm 60 hours plus on these two sets of trims. And like I say, by the time I've done the wall, yeah, I'm in over 100 hours easily. So that's it for this video. Um, I'll keep working on these and then I'll do an update. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider it. Helps me out. Thank you very much. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.